Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome wherever you are. We are very pleased to have anybody watch us, whether it's live, as it is at the moment, or in the future when it becomes a podcast. Now, Free Thought Hour is a guest show, as you know, those of you who've watched it, and it follows Global Atheist News, which has just gone out. That's also a show of mine that I put out on this channel. Now, my guest tonight is a very interesting guy. He's what I describe as a kindred spirit, because we have bumped into each other in various Facebook groups and agreed about some things. And we are we both use the word about ourselves atheist. And that in itself is a contentious word. It's got a number of meanings. But we're comfortable to describe ourselves in that way. And we're going to talk about some other words which are related to the, this debate between theists and non-believers. So my guest is Phil Calderoni. Hello, Phil. Hey, John. Nice How to be here. How the devil are you? What's that? How the devil are you? Uh... Not not the devil of anything, so but, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good today. It's an old it's an old English expression. Going yeah, back. yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to free myself of of, of the, the expressions that that have anything to do with with religion and superstition. It's just uh, yeah, yeah. get rid of the old habits, you know. Absolutely. Did did I pronounce your name right? Close. It's uh, Calderon. Calderon. Right. Yeah. I, I was giving it the Italian. E -N -E. You're right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. The Italian, the Italian end would probably emphasize the the, the E. My my grandfather was probably the last one to do that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I I guess you have Italian heritage. In over this. here, over here in California, I, I constantly have to to battle the the Spanish version of Calderon, which does oh. not have the mm. E. Um, pronounced the same, but uh, every time somebody writes it down, they write it without the E. So I always have to say Calderon with an E. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it means something to do with living in a cauldron or a crater or something. <laughs> <I don't>, okay. <laughs> anyway, being an American, you yeah. may have been brought up to be a bit more religious than I was. I frequently encounter this with my guests who are, many of them are American. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, over here, certainly back when I was born, we, we've, we're pretty much a heathen country. And so I didn't have religion inflicted upon me at all, really. I mean, the only time I went to church was when somebody got married and I was mm -hmm. taken along as a small boy. If somebody died and there was a funeral, I didn't get taken to that. They left me at home in some other care. So is that your experience or have you a different story to tell um i grew up in buffalo new york and i was raised catholic mm -hmm. um which was not particularly uh well it was not evangelistic at all it was not it was very casual you know mm -hmm. but uh the parents just kind of followed the thing about you know you what you do is just go to church and that's that's pretty much the extent of it um so you know we went to church because we were supposed to um we were not bible readers uh yeah. I, I did go to sunday school and they teach you all the happy stories yes, but, yes. Uh, that's about it and you know you get your first communion and your confirmation yeah. not that big a deal so yeah, yeah. Not like today where there's there's more apologetics and stuff but uh -huh. i suppose less so in catholicism yeah and, and new york isn't really like the southern states is that it's not really a hotbed there's yeah. it's more multi-ethnic yeah there 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 are some there are some at least at the time uh there there are ethnic areas uh, that have uh blended in over over obviously a couple centuries so mm. there's a there's a large polish population italian mm. population mm. um there are the poorer areas, which was uh, more of a black population, uh, very little Hispanic. Mm. You know, every, every area has got its uh, its history and its progress. So, yeah, but like me, you've come to be a bit of a missionary for reason. <laughs> and uh, how did that happen? Uh, so I 
a couple i had a couple of triggers um well let me let me start with the, with the catholicism i i left mm -hmm. i stopped going to church when i was like a teenager 17 yeah. or so because it just uh when i started really paying attention and noticing that it just didn't seem to have any meaning or purpose mm -hmm. it's just you know telling the same stories doing the same things it's like what mm -hmm. why uh, I, I honestly at that point i thought i was not understanding i thought i was missing something <clears throat> so I thought I'd step away for a while mm -hmm. and I figured I would get back to it, but it never, never did come to make sense. So I really mm -hmm. just didn't get back to it. Uh, and then years later, I was slowly developing the, 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 the opinion that, that, that God was probably not there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that was a piece of it, but, but also there was a trigger of, uh, nine 11 was, was one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also in 2009, after the Obama election, you remember that the healthcare, um, town halls where people were interrupting, just even having the conversations. Yes. And, and I was really struck with the concept that people come to different conclusions, um, based on the same information. And I, I really wanted to understand why and, and they so part, feel quite strongly about it can't they yeah part, well it was uh, on, to be honest it was really stressing me at the time um mm. i i yeah so i you know so part, part of my interest was was on a religious tract and part of it was on a political track but it was mm -hmm. it seemed to me that it really kind of came down to once i started to study and read about it that it came down to not the religion or the politics but the the core problem or the root cause of all this was the question of belief and how people come to belief. So right. I, I started to center my, my study on, on that. And I've been doing that ever since for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So what's your specialism? Are you in education or anything? Because it seems to me that's what you're doing. You're wanting to educate people. Yeah. I'm a retired pharmacist. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to retire early because I had a retinal detachment. Oh. So it, it, it gave me an opportunity to, to, you know, I wanted to do something interesting and useful. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've done uh, presentations over the years, uh, some writing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always interested in learning what's true and correct mm -hmm. and understanding people, why people don't. Mm. when people don't mm. so and i'm a very strong advocate for lifelong learning and yeah, at this yeah. point at this point I'm, I'm very interested in helping the next generation to take on um the task of, of defending reality frankly <laughs> defending yeah. what's real oh. and and you know as, as many false things as we can take out of uh, people's minds mm. uh, they'll be better equipped to to make life decisions and develop societies or whatever yeah um, based on absolutely. what's real informed decisions that's what we want isn't it mm -hmm. not just guesses or you know un unsubstantiated preferences so i hope they yeah. lasered your retina back together say again i say i hope they lasered your retina back onto the back of your eye okay Pretty good. There's some permanent damage, which is why I didn't go back to work. But it's yeah, it does pretty well. The brain. It's it's interesting how the brain yes. puts the the two eyes and it puts it back together. Yes. It was interesting for a while, for a while there for for about three weeks. I had 3D vision, which was just the bizarrest thing Ooh. ever. Yeah. Um, but it is it is it's since blended pretty pretty good, even though I have a cataract growing or whatever. You know. Oh right. Age. Yeah. But yeah, the brain, well, the brain does uh, does does make uh, make a pretty good image, and it's, it's it kind of a, a good metaphor for how our thinking works in general, too. So yeah, yeah, it it gathers what data it can and assembles the best picture out of it. Because mm -hmm. I I uh, I've had both of my lenses replaced because hmm. I was I didn't have severe cataract, but I was going a little bit cloudy. And, and I thought, I'll have this done now and benefit. Why, why would you wait, you know? Because I could have maybe 20 years of clearer vision or 10 years of deterioration and then only a further 10 years of clearer vision. It didn't seem to make sense for me, so I went for it 
when yeah. I didn't need to necessarily. But I've had one eye focused for distance vision and one eye focused for near vision. So, and the yeah. brain, somewhere out there, the brain puts them both together and makes yeah. you know, stereoscopic yeah. pictures. But it means that I can read with one eye and drive with the other eye and it's all, <laughs> it, it comes out in the wash somehow. Yeah. Anyway, um, time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some of these words that you've already dropped into the conversation, they are quite contentious. I mean, the word belief, for example. I started out when I when I started being sort of a campaigner for re reason and realism. I started out with a, a quite firm attitude towards belief. And I've modified that a bit now. So I'll tell you about it in a minute. But I'd like to hear what, okay. how you define it. What do you think a belief is or believing is? Well, a b belief is, is something that you consider to be true. That's the simplest way to say it. I, I, I would fuzzy that, fuzz that a little bit and, and say it's uh, something that you consider to be more likely than not tr correct or true. An opinion, um, isn't it? If you consider it, um, not quite. I, 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 you know, I try to objectify it a little bit more because I want to be able to to measure it to put some sort of metric to it. Yeah. Um, what I do is I use a, a, a scale of uh, one to ninety nine, and then oh, yeah. you can ask somebody, "Do you believe mm -hmm. X? Um, what What is your confidence from on that scale?" Yeah. Now, obviously, fifty fifty is a it's sort of a different concept so i'll avoid that one but essentially if you're above 50 you believe it if you're 51 you believe it right if you're 49 you disbelieve it mm -hmm. but and then the, the difference let's just say you you believe something then you're 70 percent sure certain the difference to 100 that 30 percent that's your level of doubt so you've got mm -hmm. your your belief to a degree and then you've got your doubt to a group to a degree and it works on the bottom of the scale similarly non-belief and right. doubt in that direction too so that way you've got not only the belief but you've got a, a scale the the strength of, of your belief and your level of confidence um a way of looking at that we, we we do tend to when we use the word belief alone think of think of it more of a as an absolute whole you know i believe something yes or no uh, and and that that can lead to some problems um particularly when you talk about, uh, is your belief justified? Yeah, yeah. Humans are very black and white. We like to have polarity. We like to have a, a yes or no answer. And we, we're not comfortable with there being a dubious, gray, middle type outcome. Mm -hmm. And, that's, and so, that's, one of those, that's one of those factors um, where we, we differ. The, there are different types of psychologies, different types of personalities. And the de degree to which some people like prefer black and white answers to fuzzy answers mm. or to be comfortable with not knowing the answer, uh, mm. that varies in the population and that varies to a degree. Mm. So we can, you know, every personality aspect has essentially a sliding scale on it mm. With, mm. within a certain range. I don't know what that range is necessarily. It's, it's not to say that some people are entirely black and white and so the others are entirely mm. open to anything. But you know, we may we, we may be, for example, let's just say uh, how empathetic somebody is. You know, generally speaking, there are not people that are completely empathetic and would give away you know every piece of clothing off their back, and then other people are completely unempathetic to others. We we do seem to operate within a range. Let's just say we're we all have some empathy. Maybe our range is fifty to seventy percent. So the the more empathetic are higher and. A, the, the less empathetics are, are lower, but it's not like they don't have empathy, you know. Yeah, so, and it might be yeah. it might be contingent on circumstances too. I mean, that's another. Yeah, there are lots of different factors, and that's one of the yeah. factors too. Yeah, I mean, a person so, yeah. who is a person who is ordinarily mean might be triggered to be more generous if he sees a certain level of need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fear is an interesting. A factor to look at too, because on the uh, within the more conservative personality, you see they are more reactive to fear, and that the, mm -hmm. the 
there are studies on this. Um, mm -hmm. So the, they're, they tend to be overly predictive of, of, uh, of things that are damaging to them and, and which sometimes are actually just not. Yeah. Um, and uh, a, a more progressive or liberal personality goes the other yeah. way. They're less, they're less triggered by, by things that cause fear. Yeah. However, I'll take something more extreme, like when 9-11 happened, you basically had the conservative side, which was, they were already there. They were already worried about people yes. taking over their lives, yes. whatever. Yes. And then um, the, the, the left, which had uh, less of that baseline fear, they they would rise to that same level yes under those circumstances yes and that's we've seen that historically that you know when 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 war comes to your you know when you have a common enemy everybody sort of gets yes. together so that's yes. that's part of mm. how that comes to be yes yes definitely so i like to think that it's the the more liberal minded people who got in the boats and sailed across the sea relatively fearlessly, whereas the con more conservative people stayed at home in case you know, they, they might mean something scary. You ever, you ever see the movie, it's an animated film, The Crudes? No, I have the audience, some of the audience have looked like. It was basically, it was kind of about this issue. Uh, Nicolas Cage was like the dad. It was this, it was this uh, prehistoric family that lived in a cave. And the dad uh -huh. would always say, never go outside. It's dangerous. You'll die. Yes. And yes. then the daughter was, was always, I want to go outside. I want to investigate yes. and learn new things. Yes. So it just, it demonstrated that, that balance of the, of yes. those two personality types. Yes. Uh, and, and yeah, there's advantages to both sides. You know, I mean, when yeah. you don't go yeah. outside the cave, when you, when you mm. are more comfortable with things being the same and consistent and predictable, you are less likely to die. Mm. Um, and that has its advantage, but the, the disadvantage to that is you'll, you'll never, you won't progress as, as quickly. No, no. And then of course the opposite size, if, if you're going to go out of the cave, uh, you're going to pick up new experiences, learn yeah. new things, and maybe you'll learn to make a, you know, you'll find a tool or see someone else making a tool that you didn't know about. Yeah. Then again, maybe you'll be the one who gets eaten because you're out there. So, you know, our societies are all a mix of, of these two yes. parts. So there's advantages to having both elements within within every population so how do you think people come by their belief that's there are a lot of different factors um i mean i, I do think there are there are well th there's actually a lot of a lot of evidence of this now that, that there are uh, bi biological propensities to mm -hmm. um different things uh like uh being comfortable with not knowing things um, that that can lead into desirable or undesirable going to people making a decision on what they believe based on what they want to believe. Uh, some of the, some of the obvious things like uh, childhood education, um, mm -hmm. the culture you're in, how much it uh, reinforces yeah. one belief or another. Um, how much we learn, education is an aspect of it, um, individual intelligence is an aspect of it, all sorts yep. of metrics on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few others. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a few others. But that's that's largely the list that comes to mind. Well, I, I was so, thinking... So, they, so basically, belief is a, it's a combination of all those things. I, I, I yeah. Again, I put those things on a sliding scale. If you look at each one and yeah. then... <laughs> put some information to somebody say, do you believe this, this thing? You, you then apply all those different elements to it and it yeah. sort of comes out of, of the wash. Um, evidence obviously is, is going to be a big thing. Logic is going to be a big thing, even, yeah. even to someone who's not trained in logic. Yeah. So and do, do you think the impact of those various factors changes throughout life? Well, that's that's kind of the nature nurture question. Um, the everything to date seems to be that the, the the nature nurture the influence of what your biological propensities are versus what you're exposed to in the environment, which includes your education, seems to be about fifty fifty in the end. 
and mm -hmm. and either one can kind of override the other mm -hmm. that could be a circumstantial too so i'm sorry ask what was the primary question again well and i was, I was thinking, let, let me lead into it because i was thinking yeah. that all the religions want to get you when you're young yeah because you're suggestible yes you well, more or less believe what an adult will tell you and then there comes a period of in your life when round about adolescence you begin to question the adults and yeah. maybe for a period you even think that all the previous generation were rather stupid <laughs> yeah. I, i'm not sure if suggestible is the right word uh, quite the right word because there there is a, an element of of, of trust of uh, yeah. parents which is essentially yeah biological that's evolutionary yes so yes. yeah in that sense and you're also uh okay we'll say suggestible to the degree that you don't have the intellect until uh around age eight or so is the the age of reason when you start to think for yourself and 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 start to have those thoughts about mm. maybe everything everybody's telling me isn't necessarily true and it's it's difficult to counteract that particularly when that information comes from your parents the, the way I think of it is if you are teaching a child, you know, let's, let's say we all start as sort of a flat horizon of what, what we know. And then if you were taught things that are incorrect, that digs you down below reality, you know, and the more you are indoctrinated in something, the deeper you go. So uh -huh. at some, at some point, let's, let's go up to, to teenagehood where you really start to get your own personality and then push back yes. a little bit. Yes. If, if you've been indoctrinated, you first need to dig out of that hole. Yes. And, and then you start learning. Yes. You know, so it, it's, it's that much more difficult. Yes. Um, and I do want to make the point too on indoctrination that indoctrination is if, because, because uh, apologists will, will make this argument too. And it drives me nuts that uh oh the other side is indoctrinating science well, yes. no, when, when you're teaching what is true and what is real that's called education that's yes. not indoctrination i'm yes. sorry you know so it's only indoctrination if you're if you're teaching something that is that is just not correct or that it, that, that serves another a, a, a company a, a, an ideology it's, an institution. A, dishonorable, a dishonorable purpose it may not be dishonorable because I mean the parents typically have been raised in this culture too, so yes, it, yes. to them it's a very honorable thing. So yes, that's, that's, why not, was, that's why I use the word false or incorrect. I mean, it's not always dishonorable. They're not guilty of the dishonor because they were victims of it themselves. Right, and eventually, pretty quickly, a couple of generations, everybody loses track of what the origin was. Yes. Or the origin becomes mythology and we kind of, again, we lose track of it. So yes. it's just, and then you, if you add the conservative piece of that, it's the, it's the comfort with uh, keeping things the way they've always been. We've always yes. done it this way. Yes. It's a nice thing to maintain yes. our traditions. Yes. Those yes. things mm. tend to keep things from, from digging out of that hole too. So. Yes. Yes. We know it works. So don't alter it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So as I was saying, I used to think when I started to look at this, I used to think that a belief is pretty much a choice. Because if you take an example like Cassius Clay, who was raised in the Baptist church, and he, you know, he achieved quite a lot. Um, he, he won a gold Olympic medal and uh, started his professional boxing career. And, knocked out a few guys and then he decided that he wanted to quit Christianity because it was associated with uh, racial segregation in the US it um, so he, he became a, he, he chose to become a Muslim and that necessitated changing his name to Muhammad Ali now I know he's dead but he's he's a guy that I wouldn't have wanted to argue with while he was alive so from that point of view i'm thinking that change of belief in his case was definitely a choice um i would disagree with that and choice choice of belief is a 
is one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. um, let's use that that example right there. What what he basically did was pretend to believe. He made it. He made a choice to pretend to believe, and then, you know, people do this all the time. And and you know, was you... that was that a, a choice of changing his pretense? So, was he previously a pretender, and merely well, focused I, on a new pretense? I don't know his origins. I mean, I don't. I don't know how he was brought up, and 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 all that. that you'd have to really get that information, but. Yeah. To, to just to look at the way you describe it, the, your example there, that he liked the way that religion presented itself or mm. his what, his understanding of the what, what it really yeah. was presenting. Yeah. yeah, he liked it. So he he made a choice to that was that became a preference for him. And then he yeah. chose to essentially pretend to believe until he, and eventually that that becomes belief. So, uh -huh. I mean, the, if you look at the literature about belief, you know, it's like you can't choose in a, in a pure sense. It's like I cannot choose to believe I have six fingers, you know. I can't sit here with evidence of five, it's very strong evidence to believe I have six fingers. Um, now, I can, I can choose to... I mean, you know, when we have when we have preferences, so let's let's go with the with the uh, like the cookie example. If you present me with a with a oatmeal cookie and a chocolate chip cookie, I'm going to make a choice. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what causes that choice. So, you know, I or I'll like one flavor or another, and I I will choose it. But I I don't I don't actually know why. But it's not a thing you can consci consciously force. You know, so when when people think they're choosing they are they're generally they're choosing based on what they like they're based on an intuition a feeling and they'll go that way but to actually believe which means you have to have a justification for it um that that doesn't happen that way and if your oh. if your justification is that feeling then that is insufficient justification yet if you hold it long enough, it will become a belief. So the same way that if, if like you said before, if a, if a child is taught at a young age that God mm. exists, God loves you, mm. and you ask them when they're beyond the age of reason, when they're 10 years old, do you believe in God? Sure, they believe in God. They don't, they don't have the reason. The reason has been lost, you know. But now at that point, they, they, do, they do believe it. Belief generally is by conclusion. You know, you 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 see information. Someone gives you information that may be incorrect, but that still that's the information that you're given. You have experiences. You have um, logic or philosophy, and you develop a conclusion. And then, if your conclusion ends above that fifty percent line mm. on that belief scale, then you've got a belief. Mm. So, the belief so by choice is a, is a really not generally incorrect concept. I don't really want to get into free will because there's a, there's a rabbit hole that we could go down. And, yeah, kind of a different subject. Yeah, and not not to not ever come out of. But I want to first of all, I want to say hello to Jason. But thanks for watching us. And and then I want to talk about because from what you've said, it seems to me that a belief can grow on you. You yeah, can yeah for sure. You can you can sort of adopt it, right. and then at the beginning you might be quite doubtful about whether it's worth believing but after a while it becomes more of a concrete thing in your worldview well again these things are are fuzzy because if if someone chooses to believe something that they want to believe that they that is appealing to them they 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 don't doubt because they really don't think about it mm. they don't they don't think about the doubt side of the equation they're not you know, I mean, just the average person coming up with 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 something. You know, it's just like if if so, if you ask someone to to believe uh, to choose to believe between one religion and another, they're you know they'll go look at those two religions and say, oh, I believe this one, mm. I, I choose that one. 
but they're not that is not a that is not a true belief that is that is a it is a preference and and again that will that will become a belief because the justification gets lost in in time in history you know a couple of years later they'll, they'll just say yeah I, this is what i believe and you ask them why and they probably won't be able to tell you other than list the things that they liked about the religion you know that one provides me with belief with uh, belief in an afterlife for example yeah that one does not so that's why like you know i'd rather be a christian than a buddhist because i want to be i want to have my other life you know with my the same mind i have now so oh yeah okay i like christianity better than buddhism right well that, that's another interesting kind of worms you've opened up there because you mentioned that at, at the sort of feeble end of the spectrum, a belief is just well, a preference. Define, define feeble. Well, you know, on your yeah. scale of 99 confidence level, this is, this is down near the 50% where the confidence level is dubious. And so, and you, yeah. you use the word preference in that case, yeah. and so I'm I'm wondering, what's the difference between a preference and a belief? I mean, I prefer coffee without sugar. Can I say, I believe coffee tastes nicer without sugar? Well, preference is something you can't control. Right, you you may prefer coffee, but you don't know why you prefer coffee. You know the same the same time the same reason it's like when i when i go to a restaurant i don't know when i pick on the man pick off the menu i mean unless i go there because i have a craving or something uh and even if i did i don't know why that particular craving <laughs> came up so it's like uh, i think that the, typically philosophies talk about desire you you don't know why what the source of the desire is you may be able to identify the preference but you can't identify typically the source of the preference mm. You know, there, like I said before, there is some biological um, basis to some things, um, but yeah, generally you're not you're not picking you're not picking the source of the preference, and you're generally not aware of it. I mean, we are we are impacted by all sorts of things, mm. by by temperature, by pheromones, by mm. levels of hunger, by situation that we're mm. we're in, uh, danger versus not danger, mm. uh, body temperature temperature of the weather, whatever, the mood of the season, you know, yeah. we're influenced by all these things that we're generally not aware of at the moment. And again, that can be influenced by age or period of your life. Sure. Because sure. I, I can remember as a child, I, I very much liked sweet things that I, I wouldn't touch now. I've gone mm -hmm. off sweetness. I've, I've matured in, you know, in that well, respect. It's... Uh, I wouldn't say mature because it's a different it's a different thing and 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 you know I could probably think of some medical reasons you know it's a, a, a drug side effect a, you know less less neurological uh, work on on the tongue sensors uh, the taste buds yeah who knows who knows I, I don't you know it's a good question for an embryologist but yeah sure age can be a factor sure mm, mm, mm. so in my early deliberations about belief and how we come about it and what it actually means to us. I had a conversation with Dr. Daryl Ray. Mm -hmm. okay, you know, the, the founder of mm -hmm. the Re Recovering from Religion organization. Yeah. And guy, he's yeah. a psychiatrist. So I, I suggested to him that, um, that, that some element of belief was a matter of choice. And he said, well, no, because you didn't choose to learn to speak English, did you? You know, when you were, you happened to be born to an right. English speaking community. And so you picked up the language and wrapped up in that, because a, a lot of our language is still biblical, you know, the, some of the expressions that we use, wrapped up in that culture, you, you also picked up this belief system that, you saw going on around you. Mm -hmm. So certainly at that stage, the very early beginnings of life, belief is not a choice. There's there's no option. You're just fed it. Yeah, you're taking you're taking in what's around you. 
mm. you know i mean you you have a you have some inherent things that come from evolution whether it be something like a preference for sweets because they have a higher calorie count mm. so that that gets put into our dna mm. um uh it's it's um but almost immediately you're 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 going to take in what's around you all the 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 best predictor for what religion you're in is going to be the the religion you were brought up in yes um yes. similarly tastes and foods right yes you're gonna you know you're gonna like this or that because it's what was available in your culture mm. um you know what we what, when we use the term acquired taste that's mm. not that doesn't apply to, to infants that applies to adults who have grown yeah. up with a different taste yes. and to, to, to like something that's a little so different initially, with their taste or texture, that's, yes. that takes some effort and some time. And, and with acquired taste, they, they learn to like something that uh, on first meeting they didn't like. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I've been watching a series of programs on the BBC over here, which is they're historical and they deal with the, the time, the centuries when sugar became available. <laughs> this is interesting to me because, of course, it's all linked, it's all tied up with uh, sugar cane and slavery and, yeah. Yeah. and initially getting sugar to this country it was, was difficult and therefore it was costly. And so special parties were held by the rich with, yeah. with meals that were entirely made of decorative sugar items, you know, yeah. and, and then gradually it, it became more common and therefore cheaper. And everybody started to eat a lot more sugar and we all lost our teeth and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's, um, that's a similar sort of thing, isn't it? The, the, the changing diet is a cultural phenomenon in the same way that belief systems can change. Yeah, I mean that's the the so the nature of fads too, right? Something something mm. will come up and and sometimes mm. fads will stick and 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 mm. that's that's cultural evolution, right? Because mm. if mm. it sticks in the culture, then then that, that gets taught and that becomes the the new norm for the for the moment until mm. whatever it may shift a couple generations down or it may cycle like uh, mm. like fashion cycles or something. Mm. But, so, so I want to penetrate the idea that belief is associated with truth, because you know a common definition, as you said, is that uh, it, it's a proposition that you consider to be true. Yes. And of course, that very easily breaks down. Um, let me just show you two slides. In what way? Well, I'll just show you these two slides. This one. This one, th this person is um, is crossing a road bridge, a rope, a rope bridge, and he he believes that it's safe to cross. And of course, that might not turn out to be true. Correct, but but so, see, assuming this person has not been, you know, forced to cross the bridge. They, the fact that they decide to walk across the bridge is is evidence that they consider it to be a safe bridge. So it doesn't have to be true. No, right? but they have no. to consider they have to consider it to be true. Mm. So that's unsatisfactory because I would prefer things that you consider to be true to actually be true. <laughs> Well, definitely. But see, that's why that's why that scale goes from one to ninety nine, and you have you can be above fifty or you can be below fifty. You could be wrong. You could have false belief, right? Yes, yes. Very, very common. So, mm. you know, that doesn't make belief. That doesn't the fact that she's wrong about that bridge does not make it not a belief of hers. No, it makes her wrong. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is which is fine. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, it happens. Where I'm going with this okay. is belief is not really that valuable. Well, belief is uh, largely uh, an evolutionary tool because uh, you, 
if you believe something to be true and that belief results in an action or a circumstance that more likely than not keeps you alive, then it is of value, whether or not it's true. So truth doesn't have to be the, 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 the ultimate. I mean, I, I, my personal philosophy is I, I, I hold truth of probably one of the highest values. Um, mm -hmm. Second, probably, probably to just human life itself, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be correct to be valuable or effective. However, I, and this is, this is more of a, of a, of a, of a guess or an opinion. I, I think that it's, uh, the more things you hold that are correct, you'll, you'll, you'll get better outcomes on a, on a broad average than, than not. Mm -hmm. So in, in many societies, would it be reasonable to say that belief is given an undeserved importance? It's not undeserved importance. Well, when, when they equate belief to truth, I suppose, yeah. Um, you know, it's not the, it's not so much the belief, I think in those cases, but, but the, you have to examine what the, the information is, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you, you know, that the definition of justified true belief is, yeah. is equals knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if we want to look at a piece of, I, I, I use the word information to say, mm -hmm. here's, here's a piece of information we haven't evaluated it yet. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Is it false? Do we believe it? Do we disbelieve it? Um, you know, it, it is, it is information until we consider it and then we can, we consider it. And then that we develop a, an opinion based on that. If we consider that opinion to be correct, then it becomes essentially a belief. Yes, this thing is that thing, or it will work a certain way. Hmm. We may be incorrect, but it's still, it's, it, I guess you could be you could look at it in terms of outcome, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I, if your outcomes are, are beneficial more often than not, then mm -hmm. the belief is a bit, is a bit irrelevant, but, uh, it seems like we would do we, like science is a good example where we mm -hmm. do, we make, we make our progress, not, by, not on the basis of belief, but on the basis that what turns out to be true is actually more valuable to us. We can do more things with that information. We can, it gives us predictions about, uh, it implies other things that we can make, could make predictions of. We can make new discoveries much more than beliefs that are based on insufficient justification or are in fact false. Well, there you go, you see, because it, it seems to me that certainly in some cultures, belief is given this greater significance that that it doesn't deserve and it's is it belief, is it the is it the belief that has the significance or is it the content of the belief well i'm thinking okay. of i'm thinking of the sort of religious belief that inspires uh, martyrdom you know so that for right. for 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 allah for example you will fly your plane into a building. Mm -hmm. now, now that's a dangerous belief, isn't it? Well, again, everything's got pros and cons. It is it is dangerous because obviously the person will die. Um, that so that takes them out of the evolutionary pool. Mm -hmm. They will then encourage others in their society to do that, and that that takes them out of the evolutionary pool. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not considering the empathy of others, so that's that's a bad thing. You're going to do damage to other people that way. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I would say, an example of a belief that is probably more harmful than not. However, you know, if, if you're in warfare and one side has decided to have suicide, um, you know, we saw this at Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. having, having the guys that will die for their cause is, is, yeah. is a tool mm. that one side has that the other mm. doesn't. Mm. So it's, it's, so it's that's... kind of a sad truth, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's a case where belief has been uh, elevated to an unre mm -hmm. unreasonable, unhelpful extent. Yeah, to but it's it's to an end. Someone has a someone yeah. has an end. Mm -hmm. um, now, 
the uh, the Christian Science Church, for example, believes yeah. that they don't need medical care, that they believe prayer is more effective than medical care. Yeah. Well, they are slowly disappearing from the face of the earth because yes. they are dying off. <laughs> Sometimes so, you appreciate you know, that. Because, and, like they, and the uh, membership uh, in that church is down incredibly low. Yes, yes. I was reading some statistics on this, and they used yeah. to be something like, because they have libraries, don't they, in, in yes, city centers? they do. And there used to be something like 300 of them in the U.S. And now it's it's down to not quite single figures, but right. 30 or so. So and that's what yes. you would ex that's what you'd expect when you have a false belief that causes mm -hmm. more harm than good. You're gonna be you're gonna be out whether it's uh, on an evolutionary scale or whether it's on a culturally success scale or mm -hmm. a business scale, mm -hmm. whatever metric you're in, you're 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 probably gonna be doing worse off than your competitor. Mm. So I, I want to go back to this um, definition of belief being a, pr a proposition that you consider to be true, because it hangs on what we mean by true, doesn't it? Yeah. So, well, yeah. Okay. It's, it's well, like a lot of definitions. You go what, down. You mean what, what is true or what is considered to be true? What it, or maybe I'm maybe I'm preempting your question, so let me back off. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it it's like a lot of definitions. You you start out defining the word you want to define, and you find that it includes another word that you've got to define. So yeah, it's a, yeah. a, a a regress a regression, an infinite regression of of defin, definitions. So what I want to plumb is what's true. What is true is what objectively um, conforms with reality. Mm. Let's put it that way. Mm. Now, our ability to know that epistemology is limited, more limited, not limited, but li more limited. But what is true is just essentially what is, what is real. Mm. What is real is true. Mm. You know, does, does, is there a planet over there? Is there a tree, you know, directly three miles east of you right now? There yes. is an objective truth to that. Well, there you is. Not, you may not know it. You may not have proper information to believe it because you don't have enough information. But there is an objective fact to that. Question. As long as you accept that there is such a thing as reality. <laughs> let's not go there just at the moment. But yeah, okay. let's you, you talked about objective truth, and w wouldn't you say that there's also subjective truth? I mean, something I can know something true about me that only is peculiar to me, and yet it's true for me. No, I don't think so. There, there is um, when it's subjective, it's an opinion. That is not an. That is not a. Uh, that is not necessarily. That doesn't make it actual. Well, see, I, when when people, I, I don't, I don't subscribe to people using the the true for me concept because no? that really opens a, a big ball of wax for justifying a lot of false belief. You can essentially justify whatever you prefer to be to be the case. There is an objective reality let's just let's go above the descartes level and just say mm -hmm. that yeah we are all in the same universe and the same living in the same reality mm -hmm. um there 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 is an, an objective fact to all, whatever um now you can have a if you have a subjective it's like we it's like well, if we were going to have an argument over what is the best flavor of ice cream you know um well that's a, that's actually a little different because that's a case where there's not an objective <laughs> fact <laughs> there are different flavors and then subjective is mm. is what is what is preferred so I, I i i don't like that phrase true for me it uh it, it it's it really opens the door for all sorts of rationalizations and and fallacious beliefs you can have an opinion yeah <laughs> and you can have a preference but you cannot define objective reality by you cannot define objective reality 
by subjective judgment. Okay, so objective reality is what's out there. It's the yeah. cosmos, isn't it? And oh, it's, it's what is actual. Yeah, yeah. Whether it be and, out and there it, or, or in here. Well, I mean, not in here. I mean, well, is there is there a clock behind you right now? Is there is there's an objective truth to that? I don't know if that's a if that's a green screen or not, but it is. Yeah, it's a green screen. So, so, so yeah. then that it, it is objectively false. There is objectively yes. not a clock, at least not by that piece of uh, information. <laughs> so, well, what I'm trying to get at here is that um, what's true now need not necessarily have been true yesterday may not necessarily be true tomorrow because everything is constantly changing that's that's fine that's that's true that's correct everything might change yes well everything has changed i mean if we if our understanding of how yeah. the universe yeah. first form, yeah. then... if, nothing, if nothing has changed then we wouldn't as long as we have time in the equation we have we have changed exactly. Yeah. exactly once upon a time yeah. there was no matter so, so I'm, not, I'm not quite sure where you're where you're headed to so you may want to get a little more specific about what yeah type of well, thing you're considering here okay you know, where i'm heading is truth is not absolute it's relative uh it is not it is truth is relative i disagree with that why would it not be absolute because it's it's only true now and there is no such time as now there's only well is it not months. true is it not true that ronald reagan was president because he's no longer president well it is at the moment but if you track back to a hundred years ago it, that wouldn't have been a true statement is it true that reagan did not exist before his birth yes these are yes. true things that are in the past yes but so so truth exists, and you're right. You, I, I, I guess you could consider, you know, what I'm kind of doing is evaluating slices of time as individual, yeah. yeah, as individual nows, and we can consider truth within those individual nows. And to yeah. say something is true does not necessitate that it's true for all times and all places. No. So but, that's why that's why I wanted to get a little more specific about what what yeah. concept you're trying to make. So maybe you're you're definition of truth is a little too broad so well i'm thinking i'm thinking of how it's used in you know in, in common or garden language the general okay. meaning and understanding of what is true people people tend to have this black and white idea of what truth is and okay. isn't so so the, the, generally speaking they are considering what is true now at this moment Yes, yes. And, yeah. and the very fact that you've had to divide time up into little slices and say that um, you know the conveyor belt didn't stop, and yeah. so 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 there is there is no absolute forever truth. It's all relative, especially to time and probably to other factors like space expanding. And well, there's there's no reason to believe that that that, that again. You're, you're, it's like you're trying to say that like a tomato that I hold, can hold right now isn't an absolutely truly there because it didn't exist before and it won't exist tomorrow you know so we can put parameters on truth we can yeah. put a time parameter if that's what you want yeah. to do yeah yeah you're um, making it you're, you're making it relative to to your, your chosen well, okay. you can make it relative to time if you want to do yeah. that chosen period of time yeah, yeah it's not relative to a, opinion no So again, it is relative. It is, it is what it is, at, it is actual. It, and that's why I say it in every, in any particular time, in any particular circumstance, because those are the unique variables, right? Those, those variables change. The existence of this microphone mm. changes based on, you know, the, the structure of it, the time, mm. you know, mm. whether it gets hit by lightning in five minutes. Yes. You know? yes. I hope not. <laughs> so right now it's a microphone five minutes it could be microphone parts <laughs> yes yes so 
what we seem to have established is that uh, truth is not a permanent thing. It's it's um, it's something that you've got to restrict into your chosen time period or maybe other factors too. So what is true now doesn't have to stay true, if you want no. to say it that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how to, does it... To, to, to say that it's not permanent or it's relative as a very broadly, generally defined term, uh, that's 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 getting too unspecific so so how does this reflect on belief then if if uh, a, a belief is a proposition that's considered to be true and yet yeah you know it's only considered to be true for this moment well again look at the justified true belief definition and let's put aside the Gettier problem for now because that's a very small fraction of of, of mm. circumstances and situations um for you to believe something, you have to consider it to be true. You have to have a justification for that, mm. a sufficient justification. Mm. And it has to, no, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. For it to actually be true, that then that becomes knowledge. But that's a different, that's a different concept. Mm. But, so, and you can be perfectly wrong. So yeah, if you consider yeah. something to be true, that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it true. It makes it your belief. Yeah. Period. Going back to your spectrum idea of confidence levels, aren't there, you mentioned knowledge, aren't there some things that are so concretely known they don't require believing? I mean, the effort. They, they don't require what? They don't require believing. Because it, it seems to me that believing is a mental process, a decision making activity, which can probably be measured nowadays with the neuro technologies that we have. You can well, study with, with, without without a thinker. You do not have belief. Mm. With you, there is no knowledge without a thinker. You just have facts of reality. Right. So so now we're talking about information that right. exists without anybody knowing it. Right. Mm. But in in the world of thinkers, okay. aren't there some pieces of information that are so solidly known they do not need considering? You see, well, I'm going back to that I, definition. I'll, go ahead. I'm going back to that definition of a proposition that is considered to be true. And I'm looking at it and thinking, I don't need to consider whether I will fall if I jump out of this window. Mm -hmm. Well, on the philosophical level, the only thing we can know is that we, that, that our, our thinking mind, whatever that is, works, exists. So let's, let's go above that because that's just fairly impractical to, to apply that to all every situation. So let's again, go above that and, and, you know, agree that we all exist and we all live in the universe and, and we all have brains and things like that. Hmm. Um, leave, leave Descartes out of this. It, well, let's just go above that level. I don't yeah. want to drag everything down to that level. Because no, no. um, it's not it's not fair to apply that to, to everyday situations. Hmm. So whether or not this, the, the sun will come up tomorrow is a very reasonable thing to believe. Yes. Because we have seen it happen. Hmm many 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 times we have history of it happening many many times we have knowledge of physics and chemistry hmm. and magnetism and everything else that you know so our, the justification is so high hmm. that um on a just purely practical level that yes it, it, sh it doesn't need to be questioned now yep. there that's not a that's not a philosophical philosophical absolute, but it, let's call it a practical absolute. Exactly. Yeah. So what yeah. I'm what I'm saying is, really, on your scale of you know zero to one hundred percent confidence, we don't need a hundred percent confidence. What I'm <laughs> saying is, we want to bring that bar back a bit and consider I don't know maybe ninety seven percent confidence to be as 
as true as it's necessary to have it, to have this proposition, without uh, for it to be believed without the need for any effort of consideration. I, I will agree with you, but first you have to first you have to decide between you and whoever you're talking to yes. to what degree you're going to uh, work above that Descartes level. Yes. So, you know, notice, uh, and you just kind of brought it out, the, 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 when I say the scale of 1 to 99, yeah. that explicitly leaves out the 0 and the 100. Uh-huh, yeah. Because you yeah. cannot intellectually, honestly, be, or actually actually be at a 0 or a 100. Hmm. If, if you believe 100%, then you are over-justified, because you don't know everything. Yeah. None of us do. No. So people who say they are they are at 100% are, are fooling themselves. And similarly, at the opposite end, if you disbelieve to 100%, also mm. not 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 mm. correct. So, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, so you can draw that scale to two to 97 if you want to say that's the the, the, yeah, yeah. the practical yeah. limit yeah. of this. Uh, I, I particularly, I generally don't do that because I pretty much allow people to. You tell me your confidence level. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that the, the bias that we all have, because people will generally say stuff like, um, you know, I believe at 99% and then, or, or they'll say like 99.99999, you know, they want to add digits on it. Um, yes. And nobody, and not nobody, but often we don't work in what's real, which it tends to be the, you know, the 60 to 95% range or something like that. You know, did Jesus really exist as a person, you know? That that's a question that is that is really in the uh, it's it's not at the it's not at the one percent or ninety eight percent level. It's that's down somewhere below that. So it's it's pretty much an unanswerable question too. Given the essentially that's that's a big part of it because it'll take you back to personality aspects uh, mm. in the circumstance where you have unanswerable questions, mm. which is to say we just don't have enough information to know. Mm. Um, some people are not comfortable with sitting on not knowing. No, no. And, yes. and they will they will counter with what well, you don't know, therefore what I believe is true. Yes. yes. Which is completely it's almost, it's almost a non secular. Yes, secular yes. Because it is. You know. Yeah. So there you go. Amazingly, we have done an hour talking about belief. Cool. <laughs> and so I've, I've got to say goodbye to you in the next few minutes because, I, you know, I, I, it's called Free Thought Hour and I don't want people to think that once they've volunteered to be my victim on this show that they might get stuck for two or three hours. Okay. <laughs> so you have been fantastic and I, as I predicted that you would. You do have a website, which I'm tr tickering along the bottom now for people to go to and visit. And a, a, a question that's um, being suggested by my producer is from the 86 books you've listed on your website, which one should someone start with? <laughs> um, I usually start with a, uh, a book called Predisposed, mm -hmm. which um, uh, is a uh, essentially a white paper or it's a, it's a collection mm -hmm. of all the research to, to date by some very good scientists on uh, the difference between liberals and conservatives and oh, yeah. goes into yeah. goes into personality, some of the personality yeah. aspects. So that that one and um, the Believing Brain by Michael Shermer is, uh, yeah. let's, let's, let's yeah. go there. Excellent. Well, thanks for that advice. And we've got some more questions here. There's, um, I, I don't wanna run on too long, but, um, this one is from Otangelo. Hello, Otangelo. Thanks for watching us. Why is naturalism the best explanation of our existence? Well, that's that's a difficult question to answer in the next few seconds. <laughs> well, let me give a, as brief an answer as I can. Naturalism is what uh, we know the most about and what is what seems to be true and what works the best in terms of scientific method being a methodology of investigating what is natural. Mm -hmm. um, now, by I'll, I'll give them a little line here and say by implication that 
uh, he is considering, he may be considering what is not natural or what is supernatural to be part of existence. Um, that may be true. We don't know if no, we can't really supernatural, no. but um, so it's not to say that we, we disprove it, but we seem to have n uh, no ability so far to, to consider it to be there. So it's a bigger discussion. Yes, for, but, for uh, another time. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the supernatural seems to be either not there or inaccessible to us. Yep. Phil, I think you've been fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on my show. And thank, thank you. you to all who are watching now or in the future. And uh, take the rest of the day off, Phil. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.